This episode of Community Updates is brought to you by First Bank of Wyoming. At First Bank of Wyoming, we promise to help our neighbors be financially stronger tomorrow than they are today. The true financial toll of the pandemic won't be known for quite some time. For many, it will be months before the shutdowns and lack of work cause a money crisis. A group of church leaders in Cody have begun to put aside funds for just such a need. The COVID-19 Interfaith Relief Fund was launched over the weekend, and according to those behind the scenes, the intent is to help those directly financially impacted by the pandemic. Pat Montgomery has pastored the First Presbyterian Church in Cody for the last 23 years. He says the idea started with one congregant's wish to help. One of our members has been, uh, had been contemplating something that might be done that's helpful uh, in response to what we perceived would be a economic needs coming up. And he and I were talking that back and forth. He talked to one of his co-workers and we we felt that the development of a fund to provide that kind of relief would be in order. So I talked with our board, it's called our session, and uh, we decided to pull money from two different sources we had uh, in our reserve monies. So we pooled $20,000 as, as seed money and at the same time, we reached out to some other congregations that we often partnered with when it came to making uh, aid assistance, uh, uh, granting aid assistance uh, monies to. And uh, in talking to them, we felt that we could form a, a, a group to oversee this money that we pooled. So the Presbyterian Church decided that we could be the, the group that that handled the accounts for that, but we wanted the leadership to be representing other congregations that worked with uh, aid and assistance throughout the community on an ongoing basis. So we pulled in some of the leaders of these other churches that had hands-on experience granting assistance, and uh, we worked together to form a board to accomplish that. Pastor Montgomery says there are a number of local churches who have become involved. The churches that are represented on the leadership board would include um, the Episcopalian Church, the Catholic Church, uh, obviously our own congregation, Cody Foursquare, and that's where we have representation on the leadership board, but we have people um, uh, both donating and uh, circulating the information about it from a, a even wider variety of congregations. Joyce Dickerman is the parish secretary for St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Cody. As part of her job, she responds to requests for financial assistance through the church. She says this fund is slightly different. Because of the virus, if their their life, if they say if they've had reduced work hours, um, total uh, furlough, uh, total uh, loss of employment, um, if they've had to take time off from work because the children were home from school or preschool or daycare. Um, so those, those folks is that those are the ones that we're targeting specifically. Meanwhile, however, our church is still receiving re- requests for non-related COVID-19, as are I'm sure the other churches. So that aspect is continuing on as normal, but this is specific to COVID-19 multi-church. Joyce points out that the relief fund will be a great help for families and individuals who may be living paycheck to paycheck. Not everyone, of course, has that luxury of having that emergency fund that was set aside, you know, to anticipate a, a crisis or a pandemic. Um, but but I think what we're seeing is folks are, are resorting to that right now. So we will uh, start to see more. So far, we've had two uh, applications that Um, have been submitted. Kenny Lee is a local business owner, member of the Chamber of Commerce Board, former pastor of the Cody Foursquare Church, and is on the board of directors for the COVID-19 Interfaith Relief Fund. He points out that it's not necessarily the immediate needs of local residents, but future needs for which the relief fund will be useful. And we're not even sure how much people are struggling right this moment, but we expect that as things proceed and businesses can't hire maybe as much as we would like to, I know We're facing that right now that uh, we're gonna probably run with the stripped down um, 
staff that because of that, there are gonna be other people that maybe are working less hours, um, maybe not getting the jobs that they normally would, the tips they normally would, different things like that, that we're expecting that later on it may prove to be even more needy uh, or needful to have this sort of thing in place. So right now, I think we're just getting set up. We've already uh, addressed one need that came up that was directly related to the COVID-19 uh, outbreak uh, and the resulting issues that came up with that. And we believe that we'll see more of those, but I think it's, it's just indicative of what Cody does. We, we're Wyoming people. We, we pull it together, we, we uh, find answers, and uh, it's great to be a part of one of those answers for our community. Lee says that while the Chamber of Commerce is aware of the relief fund, they aren't directly involved in the process. The Chamber is aware of it. Uh, and the board of directors, uh, because, I, because I sit on that board as well, I made them all aware of this was happening. Uh, and we wanted to get, to get the word out through leadership in the community so that the community is more aware of a resource that's a grassroots effort within our own community. And doing that through the chamber board and then the chamber of commerce, more of that will get released as we proceed. Lee points out that for those who are fortunate enough to be financially stable through this pandemic, the fund is a way that residents can help lift up their friends and neighbors. Some of the people have CARES Act money, they didn't really want it or don't need it. Boy, we could sure use it and it's gonna be distributed um, very carefully. And we have a, an amazing system set up for this that I think will probably carry into the future. Like Lee, Joyce Dickerman says their church is encouraging their members to donate to the fund if possible. Uh, we've put that in our church bulletin, uh, letting folks know, um, you know, of the existence of this relief fund. You know, and 100% of the of the donations received will go specific to this fund. There's a limit as to how long this will um, be in existence for. It's not a fund that'll go on and on and on. Uh, this will will run this fund through July of 2021, dependent upon. Um, funds available. Pastor Pat Montgomery hailed the efforts of husband and wife team Ole and Quincy Sandino for their volunteer efforts to put the website together and promote the fund. The idea that we can reach into the community with a web-based application, especially at a time when people are supposed to be socially quarantining, should be a real asset. I, I can't even begin to imagine how many hours Ole has put in of his own time creating that uh, testing that, getting it into our hands, the board members' hands to test, and then launching it uh, in a timely way. Uh, we launched it, I believe, on last Friday, which I think was May 1st, and we actually signed our first check granting assistance yesterday, which would be Tuesday, the whatever date that is. Um, so the web-based application still has a few bugs in it, but we're working them out. We do feel that the, the uh, number of requests is going to increase down the road. So it's really nice that we can test that with a slower number of, coming, of applications coming in, get the kinks worked out of that, and then get that fully up and running. Uh, Ole and Quincy have been phenomenal in causing that to, to happen. They really have. I think Oli had to learn a new uh, code language in order to code it. Uh, so, and and Quincy has been a real uh, support on our end from the church point of view. So, so much of this is requiring communication from these people from these different organizations. So, having somebody in our office who both is cutting the checks and facilitating that communication is a real asset, and Quincy is certainly living up to that. Ole Sandino was able to walk through the process of accessing the website at CodyCovid.org. Uh, the application itself, all of the questions are pretty darn self-explanatory. They're all uh, very simple question and answers. There's only one question per slide as you step through it. Uh, we, don't, we don't ask for a ton of information, just some basic uh, contact information things like that to start with. Then we ask you to share your story with us, kind of what's going on in your life, what's happened, uh, maybe some of the things you're struggling with and what we can potentially help you out with. 
Um, and we do also ask you for a character reference when we get to that point too. So it's, it's a quick and easy form to fill out. Uh, shouldn't take but more than five or 10 minutes if you have everything that you need right in front of you. And when I say everything you need, we do ask you to snap a picture of uh, the bills that you're asking us to help out with, whether that's a utility bill, uh, maybe a, a rent bill if you have one. So it's quick and easy and it, it is formatted and, and ideally works on mobile devices. Obviously I'm doing it on a computer, but cell phones, it works great on. It's formatted big enough that you can see it. Uh, input is nice, nice and simple. Sandino points out that the money awarded will not go directly to the applicant. Instead, the checks will be written to landlords, utility companies, or pharmacies. And then the application will come to us and the board. We'll, we'll assign it to one member of our board who will be in touch with you to follow up and, and let you know and answer any questions you might have or anything like that. And Pastor Montgomery emphasizes that the effort is not just limited to churches. Our goal is to, uh, first of all, solicit donations from throughout the community. Anyone who feels that their circumstances allow them to be generous at this time. And then on behalf of the community, not just on behalf of the churches, on behalf of the community, we are seeking people who have any uh, legitimate request that's directly COVID-19 related to make application and uh, be considered for these funds. Joyce Dickerman adds that their church also hopes the generosity will expand beyond the parish walls. We as a board have been reaching out to um, various businesses in town as well, um, uh, just trying to get, get the word out, you know, that we're in existence and, and we're all teaming up together because we're all in this together. Thanks for tuning in to another community update. First Bank of Wyoming is proud to be your community bank. To find out how First Bank of Wyoming can help you or your business, please visit their website at www.gofirstbank.com. If your business would be interested in sponsoring these conversations with local community leaders, please contact me at 307-899-2799 or email me, wendy at wanderwyoming.com.